Next up we have Richard Superbot from UCL and he's going to give us an update on what has been going on on the both, uh, both cohort studies. So he's an Associate Professor of Statistics and the Chief Statistician at the UCL Centre for Longitudinal Studies. Um, his applied research is mainly in the context of health, in particular the causes and consequences of non-communicable diseases, often taking a life course perspective. Thanks, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk uh, very quickly probably about um, what we've been doing around health data in the national cohort studies that we run at CLS. So first of all, uh, a little bit about what we do at CLS. So we run a series of national longitudinal studies. We've got four long running uh, national cohort studies that I'm going to mainly focus on today. Another three more recent additions to our family that I will mention very briefly at the end if I've got time. Um, we provide data for free to the research community, largely via the UK data service. So that includes obviously the standard amount of uh, documentation, guidance and some training. And we do conduct our own research, increasingly so, a very multidisciplinary team, um, substantive and methodological research. So because we're running these studies ourselves, we're interested in survey methodological research. And because we're conducting substantive analyses and trying to uh, encourage others to use our data as well as possible, we're interested in statistical methodological work too. So these are the four CLS core cohorts that we run. Um, so the oldest is the National Child Development Study, NCDS, um, born in, well, we aim to sample all babies born in one week in 1958 in all of Great Britain. Uh, the next is the British Cohort Study, BCS70, uh, again aiming to sample all babies born in one week in 1970. Next Steps is a, a cohort covering just England. And so these cohort members were sampled when they were age 14 in 2004. So they were born uh, in 1989 and 1990. Uh, and then finally, the Millennium Cohort Study is a, a sample of babies born between 2000 and 2002 across all of the UK. So each of these studies has a sample size of at initiation of between 16 and 18,000, uh, and they've been followed up uh, many times. So this is an, a, 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 uh, an illustration of that. So you see from the bottom line here corresponding to the NCDS, um, they were first sampled in 1958 when they were born. They've been followed up at fairly regular intervals, usually around every five or so years since then, uh, and they're now into their 60s. So BCS 70 and MCS follow a, a similar pattern of being regularly observed throughout life. Uh, next steps, as I say, they were only sampled when they were age 14, and then they were followed up every year for the first few years intensively. The, the focus there was on educational and um, their trajectories beyond, beyond their full-time education. Um, and then they've fallen into a similar pattern to the other cohorts since then. So you can see now that members of NCDS are in their 60s, BCS 70 in their 50s, Next Steps in their 30s, MCS in their 20s. So we're covering a range of ages and obviously thinking about health today with different sort of health implications. Um, at each of these uh, data collections, we collect fairly similar types of information across the different cohorts. Obviously, at, at different ages, this differs, and the different cohorts reaching similar ages at quite different points in time, there'll be different emphases. Um, I've highlighted a few kind of more relevant health topics here, um, and some of these we do observe many times within the same cohorts over time, particularly thinking of certain physical and mental health um, outcomes cognitive ability and health behaviours, which allow us to piece together these trajectories for individuals over time. Um, a quick look at where we are at, at the moment in terms of data collections. So the ones on the left are all completed data collections. The data are available for analysis. The ones on the right-hand side are ones that are in progress. So um, there's three of the cohorts currently out in the field, NCDS, BCS 70, and Next Steps. NCDS has been out for, for some while because it was interrupted due to the pandemic. Uh, all three of those should be completing later this year with data available next year. Um, MCS is going out into the field towards the end of this year, all the way through next year with data available in 2025. 
So as well as the, the general kind of often survey questionnaire based data collections, we've had a few specific biomedical data collections. So two in NCDS, including the current wave of data collection uh, and one in BCS 70. So I'm just going to have one slide looking at that in a bit more detail. So as well as the, the questionnaire capturing the usual sort of information that we're interested in, um, this wave had a, a greater emphasis on uh, certain health measures. So uh, via the questionnaire, physical and mental health, mental well-being, um, medical care, medication, health behaviors, and uh, also cognitive function. And then there was a separate set of nurse measures which drilled down into these some of these things in more detail. So lots of anthropometric measurements, physical functioning measurements, blood pressure, um, and then the cohort members wore an accelerometer for seven days. So we've got uh, accelerometry from that and also a fairly detailed uh, online diet questionnaire. So you can see there's plenty of opportunities there for a, a variety of different sorts of health research. Uh, another important avenue that we have for um, the availability of, of health data in the cohorts is through linked health administrative data. So we've had a, a program of conducting these linkages over the last few years. Many of these are only available quite recently. Um, so for cohort members across all four of these core cohorts living in England, We've got uh, linked uh, hospital episode statistics data available uh, from the UK data service via the Secure Lab. For uh, those cohort members in, in Scotland, we are linked to the relevant um, Scottish medical records. You'll see that uh, Next Steps doesn't appear here because it only covers England. Um, and in Wales, we've got some uh, linkages that are available via the SAIL data bank and also a more limited amount of information on hospitalizations and ICD-10 diagnoses uh, through the UK data service. Um, HES data will be refreshed soon. They currently go up to only 2017, so we should have uh, data beyond that, including COVID data soon, uh, and there'll be a refresh of the MCS data also. Um, a current area of, of substantial interest for us is in the genetic data. So in three of our cohorts, we've got uh, <laughs> genetic data already either available or very imminently available. And in the fourth next steps, thank you, um, it should be, it will be available in the next few years. We're currently collecting that. Um, we've just revamped the system for accessing the genetic data, so hopefully it's a lot smoother to access it now. And we're currently working on deriving polygenic scores for uh, a variety of different phenotypes across the study, so that information should be available, providing really uh, great opportunities for research across kind of health and social sciences. Um, we've been very involved in the national core studies launched in response to the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, we've had uh, three waves of COVID-specific surveys that we had between May 2020 and March 2021. Uh, there were also participants of those um, surveys were also invited to provide finger prick blood samples, which we've um, analyzed as part of a serology study. So there's antibody tests giving information, uh, helping to identify exposure to virus and vaccination. Uh, and then very, very quickly, three recent additions that we have to the uh, portfolio, I guess, of CLS studies. Um, the Early Life Cohort Feasibility Study is a feasibility study aiming to um, sample a, a very uh, population representative uh, sample of babies across the UK, including those population subgroups that are often underrepresented. Um, it's a, a feasibility study in that we're really looking at how feasible different approaches to sampling frame, uh, recruitment and kind of novel data collection methods are. Hopefully this will be rolled out into a, a larger study within the next couple of years. Children of the 2020s is another study that we're involved in sampling babies. Um, and the first wave of data have already been collected. Hopefully that the data will be available soon. Samples drawn from child benefit records, and there's an emphasis in this on really the use of novel um, data collection approaches, including um, a, an app that parents are using, I think called Baby Steps, that's been very well received by the parents. They can use this to, to record on an ongoing basis kind of developments with, within their children. Uh, another four waves of data collection, face-to-face -face and sequential mixed mode up to age five. And finally, the COVID social mobility and opportunity study, COSMO. The, the pandemic has, obviously there's, there's evidence that it's been um, particularly impactful on 
those uh, students who are getting towards the end of their education as the pandemic hit and have been really affected by that. And this study has been set up in response to that to try and explore the disruption to schooling that was experienced by these individuals and then looking at the longer term con consequences of this. First wave of data have already been collected, already available via UKDS. Um, second wave out at the field and at the moment, maybe finished already, so data will be available soon. Um, and that's all I was going to say. Thank you very much. Thank you.